Hi, and welcome back to another TechMinds video. Now, back in July 2022, a 3U CubeSat was launched into orbit, coordinated by the Italian Space Agency. Now, this CubeSat is called GreenCube. Its main mission is to demonstrate an autonomous biological laboratory for plants cultivation on board a CubeSat project. This whole project is managed by the S5 Lab research team at Sapienza University of Rome. Hopefully I pronounced that right. The spacecraft itself has two main payloads. Now more information about these payloads can be found on the GreenCube website, which I will link below. So why would we be interested in a CubeSat, which is designed to house a biological laboratory? Well, as amateurs, we've been given access to a special feature of this satellite, and that's a digipeter built into the GreenCube's telecommunications subsystem. What's interesting is that GreenCube has not been launched into LEO, which is low Earth orbit, like we see with other amateur satellites, but GreenCube has been launched into MEO, medium Earth orbit, which provides a larger footprint on the Earth. Now, later in the video, the example that I will show will be when GreenCube was just five degrees off the horizon. Now, satellite telemetry is also available and is broadcast on the same frequency as the Digipeter, which is 435.310 MHz. Of course, when it comes to receiving moving satellites, we have to consider the Doppler shift, which is a shift in frequency as the satellite passes overhead. Now, to overcome the Doppler shift in an automatic way, we can use software such as GPredict to automatically track the satellite and also control the frequency of the radio that we're using to receive. The S5 Lab team have provided on their website a GreenCube Digipeter package, which you can download and use yourself to decode and transmit packets back to the GreenCube's Digipeter. Now this consists of a few applications and a GNU radio flow to get you started. However, there is an easier way to decode these packets and transmit back to GreenCube if you want to. And that is by using the sound modem software by UZ7HO in conjunction with the GreenCube terminal program by OZ9AAR. To successfully transmit and receive via GreenCube, it's recommended to use directional antennas placed on some kind of rotator, so it can perfectly point the antennas to GreenCube as it flies overhead. Now, while this would be the optimum setup, you can still experiment like I did just with a dual band collinear or a vertical antenna for the 70 centimeter handband. Now, while the signal won't be as strong, you should still be able to receive and decode the packets from the Digipeter on board the GreenCube. So if you're wondering what kind of data we can send, well, it's a little bit like a quick exchange of calling CQ and then providing a signal report to anyone that answers your CQ call. There is also a store and forward feature of this Digipeter. Now to demonstrate this working, I'll be using four different pieces of software. First will be SDR++, which is the SDR software. I'll be then using Sound Modem to decode the packets. I'll then be using GreenCube Terminal to show those decoded packets in a nice format. And then I'll be using GPredict to track the satellite and control the frequency of SDR++. The hardware used will be an SDR Play RSPDX receiver which is connected to my dual band antenna on the roof of the house. So let's set up the software. First, I'll set up SDR++, set the modulation type to USB or upper sideband, and then go down to the rig control panel and just make sure this is enabled. Make a note of the port number if you want to. You can, if you want to, change the frequency to 435 megahertz, but GPredict will do this automatically for us once we've got it set up. You will also need something like virtual audio cable installed so that the audio output from SDR++ or whichever SDR application you're using can be routed internally to the sound modem software. The sound modem software doesn't really need many things configured, but the first setting is to make sure the correct board rate is selected. Now I'll be setting it at 1200 board for this demonstration. You will then need to configure the input and output audio channels. For these, select the input as virtual audio cable so that it receives the audio from the SDR application. 
and for your output, you can set it to your radio device. If you're not going to transmit, then the output is not really that important. Also, make sure that the KISS terminal checkbox is ticked within settings. Now, on the Green Cube terminal software within settings, we just need to enter our call sign and locator. Now, obviously, if you're just receiving, then it's not really overly important. You need to make sure that these settings here match what's set up in the UZ7HO sound modem. However, by default, these values should work. These settings are for the communication between the sound modem and the Green Cube terminal software. It's all done internally, but you do have to have the right port and IP address set. Lastly, we need to configure GPredict, which is the satellite tracking software. Now, Green Cube is listed as IO 117 in the list of available satellites. So just make sure that this satellite has been added to a module so that it can be selected. Within GPredict, open the radio control window and make sure the IO117 satellite is selected. You will need to click the T button and then engage for GPredict to connect to SDR++, which will then start frequency control. As SDR++ receives the packets of data from GreenCube, the sound modem application will decode them. Once decoded, sound modem will then send them over to the GreenCube terminal program. The data shown in the sound modem screen is the raw data received from GreenCube, while the data shown in the GreenCube terminal application will be the translated message and human readable. Over time, you can start to see a buildup of messages that have been sent live by other ham radio users. Information about LOS, uh, loss of signal, is also displayed on the GreenCube terminal window. This is possible due to the application being able to download updated TLE data files for satellite predicted position data. You can also see the elevation at which the satellite is from your location, which is taken from your locator square that you entered in settings. Of course, if you have the equipment to transmit, you can use the entire same software setup to fully automate a rotator and the transmission of your packets via a radio transceiver. And maybe that's something for me to look at in the future. I've always wanted to either build or buy a satellite rotator that does elevation and azimuth movement. Anyway, guys, there we go. That's how you can receive and decode packets from the Green Cube satellite. Now, if you've used this system before, if you've just received messages, or maybe you're lucky enough to have a transmit station set up as well, let me know the furthest contact that you've made. As this satellite has quite a large footprint because it's up in the medium Earth orbit, it's open to a lot more users at the same time. Anyway guys, there we go. Take care, stay safe, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video.